Welcome back to Arthritis Now. I'm your host, Kyle Langan, and this month is Arthritis Awareness Month. So be sure to head over to curearthritis.org to find out how you can help raise awareness. Today, we're going to be talking to Dr. Karen Kostenbader from Brigham and Women's Hospital and her work in lupus, which many people don't know is a form of arthritis. Hi, Dr. Kostenbader. Thank you so much for being on Arthritis Now with us today. We really appreciate it. It's great to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, no problem. And what kind of got you started or interested in um, autoimmunity as a career? I have been interested in autoimmune diseases, which are really complicated enigmatic diseases since medical school, really. I think I did my immunology block in medical school, and we had a case of lupus, and we learned about it, and I just thought it was the most fascinating disease. It's also particularly poignant because it strikes young women um, mainly, at, you know, kind of in the prime of their life and their childbearing years. And I think that I thought, wow, I really like to study this more and figure out what causes it. And uh, I think since then, I, I've been interested in lupus and uh, related autoimmune diseases. Also, rheumatoid arthritis also um, can be particularly devastating to people. And it seems like we should know more about what causes it and how to prevent it. And you were funded by the Arthritis National Research Foundation um, not too long ago. And when you were funded with uh, or by us, you were doing a study on lupus. You're working with an oral medication called Preva, Prevas, how do you say it? Prevastatin, Prevastatin. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. To, to see it. Can you tell me a little bit more about actually that, that study? Sure, that was one of my first studies. So actually it was kind of a long time ago now that it was funded by the uh, ANRF, which was very helpful. I am still interested in cardiovascular disease among patients with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. In both of these autoimmune diseases, there's a very high risk of developing atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. These medications like pravastatin called statins, the whole class of cholesterol-lowering medications, are thought to work at least in two different ways, to lower cholesterol levels and also to have potentially anti-inflammatory properties. So um, we and many other groups are very interested in whether these medications would be safe and tolerable and not interfere with other medications or liver function, which they can do in lupus patients, um, how well they'd be tolerated, and also whether they'd be effective in bringing down cholesterol levels. And we found we had about 70-some uh, patients in the study, lupus patients, and they took the Prevastatin for um, uh, the entire time of the study, I think uh, six months, and they did uh, very well, and their cholesterol levels came down, and then we did flow media dilatation uh, studies to check their endothelial function. So the jury is still out about um, whether these medications will reduce um, the risk of atherosclerosis as effectively as we would like them to in lupus patients um, and re possibly reduce the inflammation of lupus. Could you just explain for people who might not know what atherosclerosis is? So atherosclerosis is the process of, um, well, it happens in most, many people as they get old, kind of the hardening of the arteries that leads to increased risk of cardiovascular disease, strokes and heart attacks. But now we know that this is probably a much more complex process with a lot of inflammation going on. So that's why we think that the inflammation of diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis contribute to the development of atherosclerosis. And that may be part of the reason that the, the rates are so much higher, even in very young people with uh, these autoimmune diseases, which are inflammatory. Part of your what you're currently working on is is finding out the correlation between cigarette smoking and how that has a, plays a part in lupus and RA. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, when I first approached smoking, it had been shown to be associated especially with increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis among men, but it wasn't quite clear among women if it was also increased. Um, and it may be that men are just heavier smokers, <laughs> uh, smoke more uh, packs per day over time. Um, but we looked in the Nurses Health study, which is all women, there are 240,000 women followed since 1976, and we looked at dose and duration of smoking, and it's clearly a very strong risk factor. And once you get to 10 pack years of smoking, um, and this is for women as well, uh, there's a threshold effect and the risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis goes up and stays up for many years, unfortunately. Um, it's not until 20 years after the cessation of smoking that the risk comes back down to that of a non-smoker. Several years ago, I put together all the studies that had looked at cigarette smoking as a risk factor for lupus 
we found that past cigarette smoking didn't seem to be associated with increased risk of lupus. It was only among current cigarette smokers. So among current cigarette smokers, um, when you put all the studies together, all told, it looked like about a uh, 50% increased risk of developing lupus. And another another facet of your research, I know you were talking about um, how you're interested in in the pop in lupus population among women, um, and how like postmenopausal hormones and contraceptive use can kind of predispose to lupus. Can you tell me a little bit about that? And there is also some controversy about hormones in lupus because um, actually about nine out of ten people who develop lupus are women. Um, so there's always been interest in hormonal factors, reproductive factors. We looked at hormonal differences among women, and especially we looked at all kinds of reproductive factors. We looked at age at menarche, um, having the first period. We looked at uh, reproductive uh, factors like age at first birth and um, number of children and parity. And um, uh, then we looked at use of oral contraceptives and regularity of menstrual cycles and uh, age at menopause, and years since menopause, and reproductive years between menarche and menopause, <laughs> not counting pregnancies. <laughs> and we looked at all these different things. Um, and it was, it was very interesting. We saw that um, having menarche earlier, so uh, before age 10 versus the mean, the average in the whole cohort of these 240,000 women is about 12, age 12. So if you had a very early age at menarche, the risk was... Um, increased, uh, I think almost twofold, um, increased risk of developing lupus later in life. Oh. And then uh, use of oral contraceptives was also uh, associated with about a 50% increased risk of developing lupus. And um, uh, use of postmenopausal hormones was associated with an increased risk. I think another interesting finding was, um, which goes along with the cigarette smoking and risk of lupus, that we found that um, for the oral contraceptive hormone users, the risk was really highest in the uh, very couple of years after after starting the oral contraceptive, that if you managed to be on the oral contraceptive for longer than, so it was highest in the first couple of years, uh, one or two years, and then, and then the risk went down. So um, it seemed like maybe it was a triggering of uh, lupus, as with the current cigarette smoking, but not past cigarette smoking. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video on Facebook and Twitter to help raise arthritis awareness. For Arthritis Awareness Month, make sure to check out curearthritis.org slash take action to see how you can get involved.